It's good to be a part of a church, isn't it? I don't know what picture stands out to you for those of you guys who've been here, or, or I don't know what pictures especially stand out to you guys for those of you who are, are kind of new to Grace Point. But for me, what's fun about that is they all stick out. They all stick out because, man, God, God, God just, it's, it's a good thing, isn't it, to remember what God has done and what he's doing. I think one picture probably for me that, that always stands out is those signs. Um, because when I put those signs, when I put those signs out, I was the first person to ever put those signs out, and every single week we had to put those signs out so everybody knew how to get to us because we were like in a building behind a building, and there's only about 50 or so of us, and so you know if you didn't see those signs, you probably didn't know where we were. Nobody was coming in here because of the sign, like the sign that we have now, uh, or building or anything. They just they kind of we needed those just to get them back to where we were to the parking lot and uh, to the elementary school, and and uh, I remember putting those signs out. Uh, I mean, all the way back, you know, when it was, you know, for me, it was like a blizzard here in, in Ohio. You know, that was just a regular snow to most of you guys, but that was a blizzard to me. And I remember putting those signs out just thinking, oh, my goodness, how long are we going to have to do this? Because there was no end to that in sight of just taking 45 minutes of my morning every Sunday morning to put those signs out. Um, I always love that video, too. I love checking out uh, Andy without a without a beard, our drummer, and uh, you know, he's got a big old beard now, and he was clean shaven in that video. It's amazing what God can do in two or three years, you know, but uh, even with beards. But, uh, man, I think it's good to remember the things in our lives that have happened. And, and today, my prayer is that you would see, that you would remember, that you would know that God is alive and well, and that he continues to change things and change people's lives here at Grace Point, I think the art of remembering a lot of times, it either pushes us really towards Christ or sometimes it inches us away, which is what Paul talks about in Philippians 3 when he says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Now, when he says that, I think we kind of got to gotta do something with that. We have to think about that because Paul doesn't necessarily forget everything that's behind him. In fact, we, we see him a lot of times bring it up over and over and over again. He mentions some of the things that have happened in his past, some of the good things, some of the difficult things. So he's not meaning that we need to forget everything that's behind us, but rather forget the things that are behind you that Christ has already paid for that would hinder your relationship with him today. So what I want to do today, I want to talk to you about today and how we go about remembering the way that God wants us to remember, how you're supposed to go about remembering in a healthy way, in a way that brings you closer to God instead of inching you away from him. Because here's what I believe, if we don't complete the process of remembering, it can be very easy for us to become bitter or to truly look forward to what lies ahead. And, and I, just, I just want to ask you this question. How often do you look forward to what lies ahead in your life? A lot of times we're like, oh, man, look at all the stuff I've got going on this week, right? Or, or a lot of times we go, oh, man, I've got, I've got all this coming up, and, and, and I've got this, and I don't know how this is going to go. And, and sometimes when we start looking forward, it looks very negative, to us. I read an article recently that said that the United States of America is now considered the most negative country in the, in the world. We are the most negative country in the world. We have more than any other country in the world, and yet we're the most negative country in the world. How does that work, you know? And, and so as I thought about remembering today, I think a lot of times when we start thinking about remembering, as we start thinking about dedications, as we start thinking about, man, let's get excited, it's very difficult for us. Sometimes in our society, not to just go negative or not to just, when we think about our past, to not just think about the negative things that happened in, to think about in our present, the negative things that are happening. It's hard for us sometimes to do that. But I believe that's because we need to complete the process of remembering that we see here in Psalm 77. We're going to check, take a look at Psalm 77 today, uh, just probably the first uh, 12 or so verses. And, and we're going to look at what David did as he began to walk through a struggle in the middle of his life. Now, David was always in the middle of struggles. I don't even know which one he's in the middle of during this one. He had all sorts of family struggles. He had all sorts of situations where somebody was trying to chase him down and kill him. He had all sorts of situations that were probably way beyond any struggles that we have. Uh, but I'm telling you, if you think you're going through a struggle today, you should be able to relate to David and what he says here in Psalm 77. Let me just ask you guys, how many of you guys would say, right now or recently in my life, I've been going through a struggle? Just raise your hand. All right, that's a lot of you guys. That's a lot, I mean, I would say that's all of us. I'd say all of us, are, most of the time, are either, we're either just getting out of a struggle, we're going into one, or right in the middle of one. All right, that's, that's pretty much all of us, right? 
And so David, he's right there too. So read what David sings, I guess, and what he writes right here in Psalm 77, starting with verse 1. This is what he says. He says, I cry out to God. Yes, I shout. Oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with my hands lifted up towards heaven, but my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan overwhelmed with longing for his help. As I read these first two or three verses, I don't know if you've ever been able to relate to David. You've ever been in just one of those situations where you've cried out to God, you've, you've, you've brought everything that's going on to God, and you don't know or feel like anything's happening. Here's what I think David is basically sharing with us right here is that, man, it's important to realize the struggles that we're in. Do not just act like they're not happening. I think, it's, I think that's probably the first step of remembering is, is also to realize, okay, well, this is what's going on in my life right now. This is the difficult thing. This is where the struggle is real in my life. And, and, and here's the thing, even with those, those little signs, I don't know if little things ever get the best of you guys. Why, why those signs always stick out to me is I remember, I remember being out there thinking a few times in my weakness, thinking I shouldn't be the one putting this sign out. There ought to be somebody else, God, that's putting these signs out. I remember putting those little signs out saying, come to our church and come to Grace Point. I remember putting those signs out, and I remember thinking, it is so cold. It is way too cold for me to, like, how, 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 how healthy is this for me to be in negative something degree weather, and it's snowing on me, and putting those signs out. And I, I started having the poor me's a few of those Sundays, I think, putting those signs out. Because, I mean, it was months and months. I was the only person who did it. But I remember little by little what God did. Number one, he corrected my thinking. And he corrected my heart. Because at first I thought, well, I've, I've come out of a church where I wouldn't have had to do this. And yet God had given me that assignment just to put those little signs out every single week. The same way that some of you guys, I'm looking at Tammy smiling at me. Same way Tammy folds your bulletin every single week. And it would be very easy for a lot of us to go, you know what, I, that little tedious assignment that God's given me, I don't like that assignment. And I remember feeling that way. But then you know what God did? God brought a guy named Andy Hollister along. And Andy, at the, end of every, at the end of church, I wouldn't have to pick up the signs. He said he, would, he could take care of the signs. He would put them in the back of his minivan, and, and he would drive the signs away, and I wouldn't have to think about them. He'd bring them over to my house later. I remember thinking that was so awesome. I didn't have to put the signs out and pick them up. Now there's somebody to pick the signs up. And then little by little, God brought along a guy named Reg Dawson. And Reg began to, uh, to get there early with his family, with Riley. He still greets all you guys out in the parking lot most Sundays out here. And, and he got there with his son Riley and, and with Owen and sometimes Claire, and, and they would get out there and they would start putting the signs out for us. And I, ever since, I never had to put a sign out. But in the middle of it, I remember being, man, God, this is just, this is just I just remember being weighed down by it for some reason, thinking, I, I don't know why, how many more weeks I'm going to have to do that. There was no building in sight. There was no leaving the school in sight. I thought, I, I'm just going to have to do this for years and years and years. I don't know how long we're going to have to set up, and we're going to have to tear down, and we're going to have to put these signs out, and we're going to have to do all these things. And I just remember feeling maybe a little bit like David did, and that, that's just maybe one little way. But I think if you ever get to where you just feel like maybe you're kind of going through a struggle, uh, there, there, there's a song, actually, that I, that I, I was reminded of last night. Uh, as we were going through maybe another little tiny struggle, we were going to the, uh, the school talent show last night. Me and, uh, and my family, we went to watch Reese and the talent show, and there was 25 acts in the talent show. All right, have you ever been to a talent show with uh, elementary kids? Uh, you're hoping that your daughter is maybe act two or three, so you can kind of slip out. You know, after act two or three, Reese was act 24, all right, so you want to talk about the struggle is real, all right, not going anywhere for a while, grab a Snickers, all right, that's, that's where we were last night. But in the middle of it, one of the other acts, one of the little girls was singing this song called Blessings by Laura Story. And as she read, as she began to sing this song, I just, I just thought, man, this is exactly what we're talking about today. This idea of understanding first that, man, that God is with me in my struggle. Um, the song goes like this, we pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort, for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need, yet love us way too much to give us lesser things. Because what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights 
what it takes to know that you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? I had no idea how long I would personally be putting out signs in the snow. And I had no idea how long we would be at a school. And I had no idea how long we would be in a basement and I would be putting chairs out in my basement. I remember all those things could have very easily just been overwhelming, even those little things. And yet I believe that God sustains us through the little things when we realize in the middle of our struggle that he's there. And you see this in David. You see this. Look back at verse 4 with me. Verse 4, David says, you don't let me sleep. I'm too distressed even to pray. I think of the, and he's still talking to God, but he's saying, God, I'm too distressed to pray. You ever do that? God, I just don't even want to pray right now. Well, God's like, you're still praying. You know, like, like you're still talking to him, right? I think of the good old days, he, David says, long since ended, when my nights were filled with joyful songs, I searched my soul, and I ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will he never again be kind to me? Is his unfailing love gone forever? Has his promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he slammed the door on his compassion? You know what's funny about these verses as we read them? If you, if you heard anybody in this room saying those verses right now, you know what you would think? Well, that's almost blasphemy. You can't say that to God. It's in the Bible. All right? Like David already said those things to God. Like David already, basically he did that for us. We, all you have to do if you're ever frustrated with God, you can just start reading a psalm. All right, You can just start reading Psalm 77 right here. You say, God, I don't know what you're doing because that's exactly what David says right here. But one of the th words that I love that he uses in verse 4, he starts this little section between two interludes. They do these interludes, these sailors, right? These pause and reflect moments all through Psalms where you just kind of stop and think about what David just sang or what he just said, the chant or whatever. And you start sitting there and you just start thinking, okay, what's going on? What, what am I supposed to think about this? What, what am I supposed to pause and reflect on? And one of the things that I just thought about this section right here that just kind of stuck in my mind this morning, he says, you don't let me sleep. He starts with the word you. And even in the first three verses, there's clearly a relationship that in the middle of his struggle that David is having with God. He says, I think of the good old days. God, remember when we did this? God, remember when I saw you do this? Remember when you, you I, mean, I, I can just imagine what David was thinking. I was probably thinking of, of when he allowed him to kill a lion or, or when, he, when he killed the Philistine, right? When he killed Goliath with a, with a, with a stone, you know, in his forehead. He's thinking, remember the good old days? Remember all the, the, the opportunities that we had for victory together, God? Why am I so stuck in this right now? But what you see David doing, verse by verse, by verse here, is not leaving God even though he's frustrated. You see him returning to seeking God. He's pressing into God. He's asking God in the middle of this struggle, in the middle of this trial, God, what would you have me do? God, how am I supposed to feel? God, what is coming next? He's asking God the questions, not just walking away and inching away from God, trying to do all of these things on his own. I think that's probably one of the saddest things sometimes that I see as a pastor is I see people inch away from God. And when they inch away from God, a lot of times it's because they just begin to just slowly backing away from the care of a church or they begin to slowly back away from their relationship with God. They start putting the Bible away. I just don't think that this, this means anything. And a lot of times it's because of a trial or a struggle or even a personal struggle in their family that they're going through and you begin to see people turn away from God because it's so hard for us to be faithful. That's why for me, faithfulness is probably one of the biggest characteristics that we can have as followers of Jesus. Faithfulness is huge. Because if you're inconsistent or if you're, if you're unfaithful, it's very difficult for you to show other people how to be faithful in their walk with God. You can't help or encourage anybody else in that if you don't do that in your own life. And you may struggle in some other areas, but I mean, if you'll be faithful, at least the way that David's being faithful here to say, God, even in the middle of not understanding, God, I'm still talking to you. God, I'm still with you. I still am seeking you. I still know, God, that you're doing something. I just don't know what it is. 
When we're willing to do that, then we begin to inch our way back towards God. And we, be, or we never leave, even though we may not feel the same way that we felt on our mountaintops that we do in our valleys. We still have an opportunity to say, God is still my God, even in the valley, just like he was in my victory, just like he was in the good old days. He is still my God, even when I'm too distressed to pray, even when I'm down in this valley, even when I feel like maybe he's even rejected me or I've done something wrong, I am still going to keep pressing forward and believing that my God is faithful to me, and way bigger than putting out signs and snow or hoping that people show up for church. I, I know that God has walked through some of these moments with my wife and I. Uh, we've walked through the death of her dad, which is five years ago now, this May. Knowing God's doing something, but we don't know what. We've walked through wondering about goals that we set uh, with this building last year, last fall, man, there was some, there were some struggles, there were some trials. Wondering if we were ever going to be able to meet in this building, wondering if that would that dream would ever come true. Walking through my parents' divorce, walking through personal struggles, even that Heather and I had personally ten years ago. This year marks a ten year anniversary, almost of sorts, for us of walking through probably the most difficult year of marriage that we had. And yet, 10 years later, we're still together. And there's, man there's, just, man, there's just some victory that you can find. Sometimes when you look back and you remember what God has walked you through, even though it was painful, even though it was difficult, many of us, we struggle in those moments to remember God when things get tough. And yet, I believe those tough moments are exactly the time to cling to him the most. There was a, a study I went through as a sixth grader. It had just came out. Some of you guys have probably heard of it now. But it just came out. It was a, a study called Experiencing God by Henry Blackaby. And the study is a great study because uh, chapter 7, honestly, is the one that sticks out the most to me. There's a chapter in it, chapter 7, called The Crisis of Belief. And basically what the, what the book basically talks about is, is, is if you are on a journey with God, there are going to be struggles. There are going to be moments of crisis for every single one of us to walk through with God. And in those moments, you need to start looking around and seeing what God is doing when he shakes things up. What is he doing? Is he trying to get a hold of your heart? Is he trying to get your attention in some way? What is he doing in your life? And a lot of times we just go, well, this bad thing's happening, so God clearly can't exist. Or we say, this bad thing's happening, so clearly God's not in charge. This bad thing's happening, and so, you know, clearly I've got to go figure things out on my own like that worked the first time, right? And we fail to miss what Henry Blackaby says. I want to throw a quote up. It may already be up there. Oh, no, there it is. Henry Blackaby, quote, he basically says this in that chapter. He says, when God invites you to join him in his work, he's got a God-sized assignment for you. You will quickly realize you can't do what he's asking, though, on your own. If God doesn't help you, you will fail. This is the crisis of belief, when you must decide whether to believe God for what he wants to do through you or whether you don't. At this point, many people decide not to follow what they sense God is leading them to do. Then they wonder why they do not experience God's presence and activity the way other Christians do. And here's the thing is, ultimately what happens is the first time there's push that comes to shove, the first time that, man, you try to do something for God and it doesn't work out exactly the way that you think and you start running away from him, you miss the opportunity that you were so close to doing something God-sized for him is basically what he's saying. The way you respond at this turning point will determine whether you become involved with God in something God-sized that only he can do or whether you will continue to go your own way and miss what he has purposed for your life. David then again says, Selah, think about these things. Pause and reflect on these things. And then he finishes with these verses. He says, and I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned his hand against me, but then I recall all you have done, it turns here. And then I recall, all you have done, O oh Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. In this negative society that we live in, when was the last time that you stopped to recall all that God has done for you? When was the last time that you were just grateful to him? thankful to him. When was the last time that you just stopped and, and you just remembered five years ago, ten years ago, or two months ago, or three months ago? 
See, for me at this church, leading this church is such a blessing. Because for me, I recall each of you. I, I recall each of you, it, it, and sometimes it's, it's, for me, it's just, it's crazy to think about even where my relationship started with a lot of you guys. For Adam, I met him at Chick-fil-A, and I thought he was crazy then, and, and then I found out he actually is crazy, and, uh, but that's just because I get to pick on the worship guy, because that's just part of this, but um, I remember discussing, discussing theology five plus years ago with Rich, uh, just over lunch, I remember drinking coffee in Vegas with Spencer and Gina. We had no idea that, that we, uh, we're, you're always drinking coffee with Spencer if you're hanging out. That's pretty much, that's just what you have to do. But, but I, remember, I remember being with him, and we had, I had no idea, he had no idea that we would ever be working together like, like we get to now. <laughs> didn't mean to bang the, that, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. I didn't mean to bang the podium there. I remember TJ and Missy over here being in my basement. And thinking, well, they're crazy too, and they came on down. You guys, I, um, I could go on, but here's the thing. As I begin to recall memories with the people that God's put into my life, you begin to see the blessings of what he's doing. You begin to recall all that he's done. You begin to remember as you go forward in the future, you begin to think, okay, well, if God's done this, then maybe God could do this, or maybe God could do something else. And I know nothing's been perfect and nothing's been completely awesome all the time for anybody, but you begin to look and you begin to see, okay, maybe God is doing some things as you look back. As I walk around this building, I, man, I look around and I, I know right around the corner right here, every time I walk by this wall over here, I recall that this, there's, a little, there's a little patch of wall right over here that was, there was, somebody had knocked a hole in. They probably had a good reason, but there was a hole knocked in the wall. And Dean Melcher, he, he, he spent a Saturday morning basically patching that wall just all on his own. I just remember him down by that wall for hours. And every time I walked by that section, I remember seeing Dean down there. And I remember that, uh, man, when I, when I walk around here, I, I look all over these walls, I see Spencer, 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 Spencer. I saw Spencer painting a door frame again yesterday. So when I pass by that door frame, I'll know that Spencer did that. I saw Josh almost lose his life up here on this hole right back over here. I mean, I, I, there's, there's places all around this building that are meaningful to me. And as I put signs up with your names on them, for many of you guys who have helped to purchase a wall, whether a big wall, small wall, medium wall, doesn't matter. As I walk by those walls, I'm going to think of you, and I'm going to recall you, and I'm going to know that God is still up to something. Because God, he's not through with us yet. I remember Kyle Donson uh, parking his baby in a wheelbarrow about right here. There was no stage here yet. It was probably about right around here. While he went into these bathrooms to do some work. That sounded a little funny. But what I meant was that he went to, a, to go into, to, y'all heard that in the back, yeah. yeah he, he was working, helping us make the bathrooms, not anything else. All right, but most importantly, you guys, when we recall all that God has done for us, we remember Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. He's still perfecting us, and he's still done so much already in us. You go, man, I'm not perfect yet. I still got so many issues. I still got so many problems. You know what? God knows that. God knows all the struggles that you're going through, just like he knew David's struggles, just like he knew what David was going through. But what he was trying to get him to was to the point where he would recall all the things that he had already done in his life so he could go out and he could conquer some more, so he could go and he could make a more of a difference for, for God than he had already made. And, and here's the thing. When I think about what Jesus has done for me, what I know is that Jesus has never failed me. Jesus has always been with me. And, yeah, I've struggled, and, yes, I've thought about giving up, but when I think about the big picture of my life, I've always known that God was looking out for me. And my prayer today for you is that you would always know, because of the testimony of this church, because of the fact that we cling to God and we cling to his word, because of the fact that we walk through difficult things together and we walk through struggles together, that you would know that there is a God and that his name is Jesus. And that every time you think of Jesus, you would recall person after person after person that you've come in contact with here or at previous churches or whatever where you would go, I've seen God move again and again and again in people's lives. That's what it means to process through 
remembering to know in the middle of your struggle, in the middle of your crisis, that yes, things aren't perfect, but that God is there. In just a few minutes, we're going to sing a song and we're going to take up an offering. And then we're going to go and we're going to finish today by praying together and spending some time doing that. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to, uh, we're going to walk back to the back back here. Some of you guys have been back there. Some of you guys haven't. But we're going to go and we're going to pray over our new space for anybody that would like to come and pray for us. And, and we've got a gift for you for everybody who comes back. Um, one of the things we're going to ask you guys to do is not just come and pray with us back there today, but to be praying this summer that God would continue to do amazing things in the life of our church. We, we need his help. We need his help. Uh, I gave you three reasons uh, right there, three things to be praying for. Uh, we, need, we need God to continue to provide this summer everything we need beyond just the walls. We're trying to raise enough money for the walls so we can save some money by all these volunteers coming up to help us. But, um, but we need God to, to provide even beyond that. And so we, we just like to ask that you would pray with us for that. Also, that you would pray for the kids and the families who will use the new rooms that we're praying over, that God will give us an opportunity to use this building Monday through Saturday to make a difference in families here. See, we don't just believe that God wants to make a difference in our families' lives that are already in here. We believe that God wants to make a difference in this community um, all the way down to Middletown, Monroe, all the way up to Miamisburg, or right here in Franklin. We believe that there are people that need a spot to be able to come to that's safe, especially kids in this community where there's a lot of heroin addiction and there's a, there's a, a tremendous foster care need. We're going to talk about that some next Next week, uh, when, when, in a community where there's, there's, there's a lot of kids who are being abandoned after school each day, we want to be, be another place. We, we're not going to be able to do it for everybody, but we want to do for one what we wish we could do for all. And in this spot, God's given us the opportunity to make a difference. So we want to pray that God would be able to use these rooms back here for mamas that need to drop their kids off during the day just to get a break. We want to be praying that God would use this gym for rec leagues and for, and for uh, opportunities maybe for after-school programs that we can minister to kids in that way. And I'm, I'm swinging around a two-by-four, but let me tell you why. Uh, we, we want to give each one of you guys this because we don't want you just praying for that here when you come here on Sundays. We'd like for you to do that at home. And so we had some of our kids, they all just drew a little G with four dots to remind you of us on this two before. And these are just pieces of scraps from our first phase when we built this wall uh, that's behind me here. And, uh, and we just ask you just to take that little piece, that little scrap, uh, just take it home somewhere. It doesn't work as a bookmark, all right? It's not a prayer bookmark. It doesn't work very well that way. But, but whatever you would do with it, uh, whether that's put it in your car on the way to work, and people be like, why you got a two-by-four in your car, you know? Um, you know, because you can say, so I can hit you over the head with it, you know, whatever you need to say. But um, wherever you want to put this, we would just encourage you to put this somewhere where over the summer you can be praying with us for what God's doing in the life of our church. We want to dedicate, and what that means is we want to pray over this space, and we want to remember already what God's doing, and we want to be excited about what he's doing in the future. Pray also for the safety of the over 200 people who are coming up here to help us this summer. Uh, We're asking for prayer for that as well. And so we're going to take some minutes here in just a few minutes to, uh, to go and to pray over that. But before we do that, would you bow your heads with me this morning? And I'd like to close our our service time and prayer today, and we're going to sing one more song. But before we do that, I just wonder this morning, what's God speaking to you this morning? What, is, there any, is, there any, is there any stop in how you process and how you remember that keeps you from moving closer to God as you remember? Is there anything in your life that you just say this morning, God, I, I don't know that I've really believed that you've got this yet the struggle that I'm facing. I haven't made the turn that David makes here in Psalm 77 yet, but I want to, God, I want to recall. I want to recall all the things that you're doing. God, I want to recall and I want to look forward. God, believing, God, that you have my best interest at heart, that you want to do things, God, for your glory, yes, but God, that that includes me as part of that picture. We're going to spend some time singing here in just a second. But before we sing, God, I just pray, God, that you would just, you would just continue, Father, to show us and show every person in here, God, Lord, that you want them to know that you're there. And if they're in the middle of a crisis of belief, crisis of wondering what's coming up next, 
God, I pray that you would show them, God, that whatever it is that's coming up next, that you're there with them too. Jesus, we give this time of dedication as we pray over our building, but more importantly, as we pray over, God, the people, God, that we believe that you want to bring, Father, into our church, Father, and into, more importantly than that, a relationship with you, Jesus. God, as we pray for them, God, I pray you would even just prepare our hearts, God, take the negativity out and replace it, Father, with a, a belief, God, that you still move that you still change lives. We love you, God, and we give you this time just to do that in our hearts. We ask all these things in your precious and holy name.